The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, I am live in rainy and wet Los Angeles on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1. Joy Taylor is joining me. It is great to be here today. Good morning. It's great to be here today. So, I said something yesterday on the show, and I'm America's media icon, so I say stuff and everybody uh, reacts to it. So I said yesterday on the show, I said, um, you know, it's going to be not just cold in Kansas City. Arctic blast. They're calling it an Arctic blast. Minus 15 wind chill. Um, I've been in minus. In college, I was in minus four. It, it's it's just different. It's different that I, I skied a couple of weeks ago in 11 degrees. It's no big deal. It's going to be 25 degrees colder than that. Okay, so I've skied in cold. I'm in cold. Wrap up. You're fine. And by the way, when I skied and it was 11 degrees, it was really cold. rest of my family get, wouldn't ski. My, everybody's like, I'm not going outside. And that's with hot chocolate, ski mat. I'm not going outside. So I said this yesterday on the show, and the Kansas City Chiefs are trolling me. Go ahead and play. Arrowhead's considered one of the loudest stadiums in America. College or pro, it'll be nine below. Everybody's going to be wearing a ski mask. People aren't going to be standing and cheering. They're going to be huddled, wearing wool, trying to stay warm, wearing something over their mouths. Home field advantage via the crowd. Done. Now, I will say people will stand. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it, if for no other reason they've heard that and they'll stand. I wouldn't, but they will. But if I'm crazy... You do realize at minus 15 degrees, nobody should have their face uncovered. Like, it's, you, it, this is dangerous. So let me ask you how crazy I am with my talk. I brought out on the set, it's actually Chicago Cubs, a muffler. This is, this is what people will be wearing. Well, it's a scarf. It's a scarf. It is the same exact fabric of a ski mask, a scarf, and people are going to be all wrapped up. You tell me if this sounds the same. MVP, MVP. <laughs> They're not gonna, it's not going to be in their mouth. Okay. Yeah, Tom Brady. You're not very good. Tom Brady. You don't think volumes change? I'm not sticking this in my mouth. I'm simply putting it over my mouth. You, I understand the concept of what you're saying. It's, you think I'm crazy? It's, no, I don't. I, I think if it was very cold but it wasn't an Arctic blast it's that it an might Arctic not blast. the volume of the fans. Again, you and I have been in four degrees. You and I have been I in... was in Kansas City with Earl for Thanksgiving when there was a blizzard there. It's and it was very, like, very cold. It was like seven degrees. I, I don't know how cold it was, but it was a legitimate it's be blizzard. Minus and 15. And the airport was shut down. So however cold it needs to do that. So just tell me, you don't think there's a change in volume because <laughs> what a crowd does is it takes away the audible system. Right, but there's also people that go out there with no shirts on. That's not going to happen. You don't think there'll be one maniac with no shirt Well, there's on. always a drunk. Yeah, there's probably eight of them. Kansas City likes its beer. Just, 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 what does this sound like? Yeah! You are a maniac. I think I'm right. Very scientific experiment yes, you're it, doing it here. it really was. Listen, the environment there is going to be as loud oh, you and think as... So? as Pumped up and ruckus I'm as not, it can possibly be in that weather. However much the weather is going to affect the okay. fans yelling and screaming. People are going to be yelling and screaming. I'm not saying it's a library. You're almost going to have to stand because sitting is really actually a bad idea when it's that cold. I'm not saying it's a library. I'm not saying it's going to be like a home game. I'm just saying minus 15. Some people are going to have some things over their face, yes. Some people, any of them with an IQ higher than ranch dressing, will cover their face I wouldn't let my kids go to a game and not cover their face. But I mean, when when something's going, when they're in the middle of a drive, you know, you take your you take your ski mask down, you t you take your thermal cover down, you yell. It's actually yeah. better when it's this cold is, this, to stay this is up what and you stay do. moving. Yeah, this is what you do. Ah! You take it down for like a second, and you're like, what am I doing? I'm telling you. I'm telling you, anyone from Kansas City watching this right now is very upset with you. <laughs> and they're going to make it a point because you're saying this to try and be as loud as possible. Uh, well, as America's media icon, this is you the... You get very sensitive about what you say. I know. And you didn't, you didn't fire back at, uh, at Nick there. He said that you guys were, no, were equal, you know? Let's have fun.
All right, four or five uh, years, we were on this big thing. For four or five years, I kept hearing this argument. Aaron Rodgers, GOAT, Brady second. Or Brady one, Rodgers two, greatest all time. Apparently, Joe Montana, John Elway never existed. Peyton Manning never existed. I always said, what? <laughs> you do get that, like, Tom Brady's got a room in his house full of trophies. They're not, that's a stupid argument. And uh, then I had something, I said something during the middle of this year. And I said, um, the, and it was perceived as a hot take. I said, the eight best quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. It's not just about Super Bowls. This is about talent, playoffs, uh, records, uh, your impact to the league, your impact in the city. Um, what did you overcome? What did you play with? The eight best quarterbacks I've seen. And again, there's a lot of different. It's Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Joe Montana, Terry Bradshaw, John Elway, Dan Marino, Aikman, and Breeze. Now, people said, well, uh, uh, you're just saying Troy Aikman. No, 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 no. Leadership, playing hurt, toughness, dominating a great division when Washington, Giants, and Dallas were power. Those are eight best quarterbacks. But the one that got people worked up is Drew Brees. It was a hot take. Was Aaron Rodgers. And I said, he's right on the outside, right next to Brett Favre and Steve Young, and maybe Dan Fouts. And isn't it interesting, Mr. I'm crazy hot take, right? I was, whoa, you're just, and I said, no, let's talk about impact to a city. Whereas Aaron Rodgers was given a championship roster, a championship level head coach, and championship momentum in front office, Drew Brees was given the Cleveland Browns with a port, Katrina, Bounty Gate. One guy was given the laughing stock of the league that had one playoff win in the history of the franchise. The other player was given, arguably, the most iconic franchise in the NFL with championship-level players, great momentum, terrific front office, very good head coach. So that's not close. Also, let's go through four or five things. If Drew Brees wins this weekend and goes to the Super Bowl, and they are favored, and, you know, most people like the Saints. If Drew Brees gets to the Super Bowl, and if he does against Kansas City or New England, that again is going to be a field goal game. If Drew Brees wins the Super Bowl, and again, they're favored at home this weekend to get there. Super Bowl titles against Aaron? Check Brees. NFL records? Uh, not close. Check Brees. Impact on a franchise? Drew Brees, folks, is the Saints. Okay, Aaron Rodgers is arguably not the Packers' best quarterback ever. Impact on a franchise is not close. Leadership qualities. Well, I don't know. One guy has former teammates constantly calling him out. One guy is revered. We're 300-pound offensive linemen. Literally, do we have the piece of tape? This is what happened when an offensive lineman... Zach Streif retired recently. For the past eight years, I've played in front of the most prolific passer in NFL history. Drew Brees has been the single greatest motivation for me as a player. My greatest drive as a player was not to let you down. You're the greatest leader I've ever been around. And I admire you so much as a player, but more as a person. I will miss being around you on a daily basis. Thank you for everything that you've done and continue to do. Leadership, check, breeze. By the way, I'll just throw this one out here. On his way to a Super Bowl, do you remember that year? Drew Brees beat Hall of Famer Kurt Warner, Hall of Famer Brett Favre, and Peyton Manning. Roger's Super Bowl run beat Michael Vick, Matt Ryan, and Caleb Haney before beating Big Ben. You thought six, eight, ten weeks ago that was a hot take. The hot take today, if Breeze gets to another Super Bowl, is Aaron Rodgers is all-time better than Drew Breeze. Does impact to a franchise matter? Does leadership matter? Do Super Bowl titles matter? Do regular season records matter? Gang, it ain't close. 
It ain't close. It is a hot take to say the opposite of Drew Brees will elevate above Aaron Rodgers. Slam dunk. I will have my picks Friday. We are 8-0 straight up. It's a very good feeling. I'm not going to lie. So you're feeling confident because you're 8-0? MVP. Oh, wait, time out. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, time out. We got, we got an update. John, we have breaking news. Breaking news. Okay, what's the breaking news? I don't think the Arctic blast will be as Arctic as originally anticipated. What are they saying? What are they saying? It's like probably going to be in the teens at game time. Oh, well, hell, that the whole thing doesn't.